I built an AI powered applicant tracking system in Google Firebase Studio entirely for free. And in this video, I'm gonna walk you through what I built so far. We're gonna build some more front end uh, functionality and I'm gonna share the seven things you need to know about using Google Firebase Studio, where it should fit in your kind of no code AI tooling stack and why it's a great choice if you're just getting started with AI and building custom software inside your company. Hey, I'm Craig Hewitt. Welcome back to 100 Days of AI. Let's dive in and see what Google Firebase Studio is all about. Okay, here's the kind of homepage of Google Firebase Studio. And you can see you can create apps in different programming languages. So PHP, Python, Go, all these different things here. I've already got a couple of things that I played around with here. Uh, so I'm not gonna create a new one. I'm gonna take you into Hire Smart, which is the applicant tracking software that's AI powered that I built. And you can see kind of what we have here. I'll take you through the whole prompting chain and everything that I did in just a second, but I'm gonna give you a tour first, and then we're gonna build the kind of application part of it together, okay? So, uh, so what we have here is a pretty typical dashboard where we have uh, roles, and the roles have jobs or applicants, and they have a score. And so you can see here, Charlie Brown <laughs> got 95 out of 100, uh, and the AI graded him as an excellent fit, matches all key criteria, including B2B SaaS, right? Uh, and this is his resume. It's a very short resume, but this is just as an example, okay? Um, and so you can see here that Diana Miller has not been uh, screened yet, so the AI has not reviewed her application yet. We're gonna go through that in just a minute. I just wanna give you the rest of the product tour. Uh, and you can see that these two are open, but this one is closed and it didn't get any um, applicants. And you could add a new job if you want to, so title, department, role, uh, requirements, and what makes a good candidate in your AI screening criteria. So we built all of this in a couple of prompts. And I'm just gonna take you all the way to the top here. And the initial prompt was build an applicant tracking system, ATS, for my company to use. Integrate Gemini AI functionality to screen for the best candidates of each role. Give the administrator the ability to set the ideal criteria for a candidate and then rank and score each applicant. Allow for multiple roles to be open at one time and multiple candidates per role. Nothing earth shattering about this prompt, right? This is just me saying, hey, I want this thing to use at my company. And I 100% would use this inside my company. It, it does exactly what I need it to do uh, in screening candidates and having multiple jobs open and doing the thing that we do manually, which is like, hey, is Diana a good fit? You know, like, I don't know. I don't, Diana is a former project manager with two years experience looking to transition into product management. You know, like instead of, you don't know how it is. Like you get hundreds of applicants when somebody applies for a job. Like, I don't want to have to go through that. I just want to push a button and AI magically do its thing and me get the top 10 people to move to the next step. That That's kind of like what I'm looking for. So this is the base prompt here. And uh, it kind of said, hey, this is what we're gonna build. So features, job posting, application, applicant summary, uh, AI powered candidate screening, uh, criteria definition, candidate ranking, role management, uh, candidate management. And it said, hey, I'm gonna kind of have these kind of layouts and colors, is that cool? And I said, yep, that's cool, prototype this app. And it went away and worked and did a bunch of stuff. And this is the first thing I wanna show you about Google Firebase Studio. And so you have a couple of different modes this is the prototyping mode. There's also the code mode. Oh, the code mode, that rhymes, right? Uh, and here you have all the different files and places where you can come in. And if you're a developer and you're like, hey, that's cool, like this got me pretty close, but I really want to go and mess around in the code here and I want to do stuff. That's cool, that's totally cool. Maybe you're like, I, um, I want to update this package, right? This node package. So that's cool. Maybe you have uh, an integration that has like an API and you need to come in and put an API in a .env file. That's like a special secret file that like just uh, tells you kind of like how to connect APIs and stuff like that. So you could do kind of any of these things, right? So you can come in here and play around with code. You also can do branching. Branching is a term when you talk about GitHub, and that's the third thing, I guess, is you can connect Google Firebase Studio to GitHub. Uh, I did not do that here just because this is an example, but if you want to connect to GitHub, uh, you can, and you can use version control with Google Firebase Studio. Super powerful. With version control, allows you to run different branches. 
And a branch in software development is like, hey, this is like the standard way. I wanna keep that going, but I wanna kind of fork this off and play around with something over here. It's kind of a copy of it. And you can take that fork and maybe build a new feature and you can merge that feature back into the main branch later uh, when you think it's right. But if it really goes wrong, you're on a branch. It's like a copy. And you can just kind of nuke that, <laughs> that branch and just go back to the main thing and start a new branch and start over. All this stuff about version control. If you're a developer, I'm sure you're rolling your eyes right now, but that's how I think about it because I'm not a developer and this video is not really made for developers. Uh, but, but version control is an extremely powerful tool in the arsenal of anyone looking to build software because it lets you do things with confidence that you're not gonna mess up what you've done already. Cool. Okay, so uh, so you have all these different panes, right? You have the code, you have the preview, um, or what do they call it, the prototyper, and then you have the, the chat over here on the side. And so we can see the chat here. So it went away and did some stuff, and it gave us basically this. Um, and I said, okay, good start, but I want to be able to open an applicant's application. So per the first version of this, I couldn't click on this and see Charlie Brown or Diana Miller's example. So I had to add that. So it did. It went away and did that. Uh, I said, great. Now there's no way for me to go back. So it added this and this button. That was this bit here. Um, cool. And now I want to add a new role. And so it added this button here. That's it, right? Hey, I want to add this new role, but there's no way to do that. Create a button from the main dashboard page. Give me the fields for the role, title, department, criteria, et cetera, for all the fields that are in the current uh, role view. Uh, and so that's like all of these bits, right? Um, and so it gave me this button to add a new job. Uh, and so that's where we land today. Now I want to show you uh, that we are going to, let's see, I'm going to close this out and we are going to build the application part. So I would call this like the dashboard. I want to build kind of the front end for a new applicant to see. So you'd make that like slash apply maybe. And so we'll just tell Gemini that we want to build this thing. So now I'll just speak into the computer and Super Whisper will transcribe this. Uh, amazing Super Whisper did a video about it on the channel, but it's just a way to talk into the uh, computer and it transcribed for us on the go. Okay, now I want to create an application page so that job seekers can apply for a job in any of these that are open, uh, have a field for things like name, email address, resume, which can just be plain text, and uh, they can select which open job they want to apply for. So create that application page that would be public facing for job uh, applicants. Okay, so that's the prompt, pretty much just plain text, right? Describing exactly what I want to do. And so it's going away and saying, cool, I understand what you want to do, and it's creating this code. This is exactly the stuff that we did up here, right? It's no different. You just speak or type. If you don't have Super Whisper, which you should have Super Whisper, so go get it. Uh, it's like $80 a year, I think. It's like the biggest deal ever. And it's going away and creating these things. Now, we'll see, like, is it going to create a, a page? Like, what would be really cool and I should have said that is like in in this pane, is it going to have um, the is it going to have like the uh, application page? Hmm. It didn't. Oh, okay. So it just says, "Hey, go to slash apply." So that's cool. So we'll come up here, and in the browser, this is one other aspect of um, of Firebase Studio is like you have a in the prototype where you have like a real browser where you can go and just go to apply and it'll open this page. Cool, okay, so basic, right? If you're like, hey, I want I want more fields, I want all this other stuff, but you can say, hey, uh, these are the two roles that were open, cool, okay. So let's just test this out, Prod product manager. Um, <laughs> okay, uh, okay, cool. Application submitted, you'll be in touch soon. Okay, cool. So now let's go back to dashboard because that's where this lived before. And under product manager, okay. Jane Doe is here, not yet screened. Uh, and this is her resume, which is pretty lame. Okay, I'm gonna show you the screening bit now. And, uh, and then I'll show you one other aspect of, okay, cool. 
Um, oh, Jane Doe got a 77. <laughs> uh, okay, so like, all right, we have a little bit of a bug here, right? Okay, this is cool. We might um, we might actually go in and tell it that like, hey, this is not uh, this is not this is not actually accurate. So let's tell them. Let's tell them here. Okay, so that's cool. Okay, so basically telling it, hey, I think this is bogus because, uh, and what I've seen in doing a lot of this kind of AI prototyping stuff is it probably just hard codes in some of these things, like so 77, so they're in 75. Hmm, you're right to point that out. Uh, it looks like the AI flow for screening was using placeholder logic. Exactly, so it's using placeholder logic, which is really common. Um, but while, while it's doing that, I wanna show you two other things about Firebase Studio. Um, the first is we have shortcuts here, right? So uh, if you're a developer, shortcuts are your friend. Like a lot of developers I know don't use the mouse like at all. They have all these keyboard shortcuts. So you get really proficient with just using the keyboard here. That's cool. Um, the other thing is um, back in the prototyper pane is this annotation button. So we can come and annotate on the screen and send this drawing to the AI to the prototyper if we want to like move some bits around or have the have the layout be a little bit different. So we might do that after it goes back and creates this bit right here is use the annotation tool um, to to make this look better. Okay, great. We got a um, we got an error. Uh, runtime error, the use server file can only export async functions found object. You know, I don't even know what that means. Uh, but it's not done yet, right? It's still working, so it might see this, and it might uh, it might like fix it before it's done. If it's not, I'll show you the other thing about Google Firebase Studio, which is when you have issues, you can just click this button and it fixes it. Okay, so uh, we're gonna wait for it to finish up here, and then we're going to um, and then we're gonna see if that error is still there, and if it's not there. We're gonna um, we'll be done, and if it is there, we'll fix it, okay? Okay, great. Uh, this is one of the other things I wanted to show you, which is if you're using AI in your application, you need to have a way to connect like an API key. And so it's asking me in a secure way, hey, what's your Google Gemini API key? Um, what's your Google Gemini <laughs> API key? Uh, and so let me go away for a second, grab that, and I'll come right back and paste it in. Uh, I won't show you what it is just for security reasons. And then I'm just going to hit continue and it's going to go away, store that somewhere securely. So it can use that over and over to make these API calls to Google Gemini to score candidates. So I'll be right back. Okay. Uh, cool. Okay. So I entered my API key and says, I've detected an error. Want me to help you fix it? And I say, heck yeah, I don't know anything <laughs> about code. Please fix it. Uh, this runtime error use server file. I don't really understand what this is saying. Uh, and so you could do things like just take a screenshot of this if you want, but Firebase Studio is really smart and all this is integrated. Uh, you know, we've used Replit, we've used Lovable, we've used Bolt, we've used V0. To me, Firebase Studio is the closest thing to a real development environment where I think most of those other ones are kind of mostly front end things. Uh, I like how much control I have over being able to see the code here. Uh, okay, cool. By removing a single line, the error should be gone. Your application should still be working. Uh, okay, great. So let's see. We have in the product manager. Uh, okay, Diana still has not been screened. So let's screen her and see what kind of uh, score we get. And if it's 77 or 75, I'm going to lose my mind because it means that it didn't do what it told. Okay, great. She scored 15 out of 100. This is per like this is what we want, right? Is like Diana was has two years of experience, probably not enough, um, and strong organizational community, you know, certified Scrum master. Like, okay, I don't know, like that's that's probably not a great candidate. Uh, my my screen criteria is here at least three years in B two B SaaS, proven track record of launching new products from scratch. So yeah, she doesn't sound like a good uh, a good candidate. So that's fantastic. Um, okay, so Firebase Studio, where do you use it? Where are other tools better? Um, it's a spectrum, right? All these no-code AI development tools are a spectrum, I think. For me, things like Bolt, Lovable, V0 are at the kind of like, hey, this is mostly front-end and a little bit of lightweight database stuff. Um, ooh, one step before that is another free Google, <laughs> Google, Google Stitch. 
uh, is the one that goes before that. I'm gonna do a whole video about free Google AI tools. Uh, this is a really cool um, uh, prototyping tool, just front end though, right? So so Google Stitch, uh, you go like, hey, let's make this really uh, amazing front end uh, design and layout, and then come into Firebase Studio and make it. That might be how I do it. So uh, Stitch, front end only, V0, bolt, lovable, a little bit of code maybe, uh, something like Replit, maybe a little more code, and then, which we're gonna get into probably tomorrow, things like Cursor and Claude Code, which are like hardcore <laughs> AI developer tools because we're gonna do some hardcore AI vibe coding here on the channel, probably starting tomorrow. So stick around, subscribe if you haven't already, so you get that because I'm gonna teach you Cursor and Claude Code, which are the premier uh, AI coding tools uh, and I'm gonna teach it for non-developers because I'm not a developer and we're gonna we're gonna develop and we're gonna code stuff for non-developers. It's gonna be awesome, okay? So this is a walkthrough of Google Fire Firebase Studio um, and how I use it and how you should use it. And I would use it primarily for internal tools. You could build a whole SaaS app because like, look, this is a whole SaaS app. You have source code, you can connect this to GitHub and you can go away and like be running a real production app and just be vibe coding here in Firebase Studio entirely for free. I don't know how Google is doing this, but it's really amazing. Okay, uh, I'm Craig Hewitt. This is 100 Days of AI. If you haven't already, please subscribe. I would love if you could share this with someone else who you think would enjoy it as well. And I'll see you tomorrow.